Hi, I'm Jacob Huey, and this is Bible Bites with Monovilla Church. All right, so the two passages I decided to go with today were Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, uh, which I'm going to read for you right now. In the So in verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died. Now I want to stop right there for a second because with those few words, we get the context of this passage. King Uzziah has died in Israel, and he... And so in Israel, in this nation, there is political upheaval. The the system is changing. A new king is coming to take the place. They're not, they're mourning the loss of their king for one, but they're also, I'm sure there might be questions of who's this new king going to be like? Is he going to be a good king or a bad king? And right now, with Israel's favor, chances are not a great king is coming to take his place. It's this time of uncertainty. Uh, time of chaos, and I'm sure with all those mixtures is a time of fear. And it's in the context of that that God commissions Isaiah. And the way he does it is through this vision that we're about ready to read. Um, and in this vision, it, it isn't just for Isaiah. As one of my professors pointed out in class while going over this passage, it's for the nation of Israel, uh, a message speaking directly to the time and struggle they're in. And so we read of what Isaiah saw in this vision. Isaiah says, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. And so in this time of chaos, of fear, of change and transition in Israel, of political upheaval, God speaks this message of, and this gives this vision to Isaiah of a, his throne room that is filled with so much awe and power that leads Isaiah to say, woe to me, I am ruined. But in there is the message that God is on his throne. That hasn't changed. That God is still being praised for being holy, 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 for being almighty, for the earth still being filled with his glory. It's almost to say that the message that this vision is supposed to instill into Israel as a nation is even though you're in this time of change, transition, the one steady thing is that as God, I am still on my throne. God is saying to the people of Israel that I am still on my throne, that he is unaffected by the changes and transition and the, the fear and the chaos that is happening in their world, that he is still on his throne, meaning he is still in control, that he is uh, still filling the earth with his glory and he is still the Almighty. I think about today and today's world and how we are in this time of just chaos. COVID alone had changed so much of the structures we've had in this world. The current political climate is getting only ramping up more and more day after day. And it's hard to feel like there is anything that's in control right now. And that is where I turn to this passage and am reminded, just like for Israel in their time of chaos, that God was on his throne in control. So was, so is God today on his throne in control of everything that is going right now. He is still almighty, he is still holy, and he is still good and still filling the earth with his glory. Now, here's the important part. Now let's take that truth and carry that over to the, now Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verses 14 through 16, where we read, 
Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Now pairing that with what we just read about in Isaiah chapter 6, God is in control. He is on this throne, in this throne room that has so much power and awe that leads Isaiah to say, woe to me, I am ruined. Um, but that God is in control and has the power, still almighty, still holy, and still good, it doesn't make him then a distant God. He is not distant from us. He is holy. He is holy other than us. But because of Jesus, as we read in Hebrews, because of the high priest of Jesus, the Son of God, who we profess to be our Savior, we now have this ability to approach the throne with confidence. We can approach this throne of grace with a God who understands what we're going through, who isn't, un, who isn't unwilling to empathize with us and what's going on, and he wants us to draw near, to have a relationship with him. Empathy is a very strong emotional word, but it's also a relational world word. You can't empathize alone. You need someone to empathize with, and God has this ability to empathize with us, and he wants us to draw near to his throne with confidence. And so that is what I want to leave you with, the encouragement and the charge. One, the encouragement that God, regardless of what's going on in the world, is still on his throne. He is all-powerful, still the Almighty, still holy and still good, but also the charge to draw near to him. We have the ability to draw near to him with confidence to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. And now it's our time of need more than, I would say more than.